Kyle Korver is one of the greatest three-point shooters in history, but he sees himself as the son of a pastor from small town Iowa. His certainty has never been the next shot, but the support of his family. Oldest of four brothers, Kirk, uh, my youngest brother, was 10 years younger than me. You think of four boys growing up and you think of, you know, competitive nature of the boys, but we had that for sure, but we were really for each other too. I cannot remember my oldest brother ever beating me up, not once. He was always protective, was always kind, um, always took care of us. We were kind of four versions of the same person in some ways, you know, we were very similar. We all love basketball, we all love competing. The four brothers starred at Pella High School, then all played in college. But the competition started on the court their parents built in the backyard. We got a couple good two-on-two -two stories, but Kirk was quite a bit younger. So when we did pair up, it was usually me and Kirk versus the notes, and we did that in everything. Our parents never made us play basketball, and they never made us shoot baskets. We all wanted to be good, because Kyle's very good. Kyle has carved out a strong career, now in his 15th season. But as he was preparing to make another playoff run with the Cavs, he received news from his mother that would change everything. We played Phoenix, and after the game, I had a text message from my mom um, saying to give her a call, and she explained that Kirk was really sick. His organs were shutting down. We thought maybe he was a little depressed or something, but no one would have suspected that he was that sick. Kirk was admitted to the hospital on March 13th. Kyle and his brothers rushed to his side. Six days later, Kirk was on top of the transplant list for a new liver. Within hours, a match was found in Colorado. We were just, I mean, tears of joy. Like, he was going to be okay. And we went there with that mindset, and then, uh, yeah, that night a lot of things turned. And that was a hard day. At 4 a.m., they intubated him. At 10 o'clock, he coded for the first time, and we pulled all the machines off at 1 o'clock. So we went from, he's going to get a liver. He was the number one option to, your son is dead. And that was in, what, 15 hours? I mean, you talk about a roller coaster. Getting to sit around his bed together as he passed uh, was I think, really healthy and really good. And we just got to sit around him and say, we love you, I'm proud of you. You're a good brother, you're a good man, and uh, you can go. So here we are with our three sons, and we're watching our son die. That is as uh, intimate and uh, raw as you can be as a family. Even as I talk about him with people, I, I, I try to make points that Kirk is, that Kirk was, because Kirk still is. There will always be four. Um, yeah. It's going to be different. There is a before and an after. There is. But you will always have four sons. There were always before. We love you, Mom and Dad. We love you, Kirk. I wanted to honor my parents because, um, you know, when things happen like this, there's a lot of questions and there's a lot of things that you think about. And I just wanted them to know that they are so good and that, uh, that, uh, that they've been incredible parents to us. Kyle returned to the Cavaliers a couple of weeks before the NBA playoffs, only seven days after his brother's death. The first round against Indiana it was just, like, I just be, like, like, crying, falling asleep from my pregame nap, and, like, waking up, and my insides are just, like, trembling, and trying to get your mind together to go play this series. You never know what's coming in life. 
and then will you be ready? Sometimes we don't find out until we're in the hard place, but then it's kind of too late to get ready. You know, death, like nothing else, gives you different eyes for what's going on in the world and what's important and what matters. 